socket I lost earlier on. Marvellous. Ow! 60 diesels. What I've decided to do today, apart from knock a load of stuff over, as obviously recently I've sold a load of my treasure off, this gave me some money. Not very good with money. So what I decided to do was spend a load of it on some really silly bits to upgrade one's recovery truck. So I've got this whopping great big whole set twin scroll turbocharger. I can't remember what number it is. It does say on it somewhere. It, um, it shouts. Obviously, twin scroll, a bit of a problem getting it pulled up. So then I went to the people at Diesel Pump UK and spent another extortion amount of money on this quick spool valve that was only like five or six hundred quid. It's fine. Which obviously, she bolted on there with a boosty stuff on it to do the boosty things. Um, and then we could obviously do some adjustments because. So well, what we're going to do is go and take the smaller turbocharger off of my um, off of my recovery truck, which isn't your standard recovery truck, and then attempt to retrofit this one and see if it works or blows up. One way of finding out. Right. So this is one's recover well, one of one's recovery trucks because man's got to have more than one. So when we first bought this, it's like a 4.6 ton LT46 of Volkswagen with an alley body on it. And it had a slightly narnered 2.8 ATA coded. It's a big engine in one of these, but it's only four cylinders instead of five, but it's bigger horsepower. So it's about a load of money in building that. And then was massively, was a bit disappointed really. It's like 131 horsepower. I didn't really have it to use a vice grip thing it didn't really have the onions so what we then decided to do was fit this so lots of people put the om 606s in which is a very good engine i like 606s but i do like a 603 so same sort of thing but 12 hours instead of 24. now all the british versions were non-turbocharged and were a bit made of fromage on the inside so if you boosty 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 to death your standard british one Conrod's bend, pistons melt, there's no piston oilers, it all goes a bit horribly wrong. So what you need is the European version that came with a turbocharger. So this, one went and found two of the European versions, because it's always good to have backup. That's over there underneath the bench. And we have broke that already and repaired it, but we haven't broke this one. So this one's got decent sized Conrod's, not the original, slightly bigger ones, better pistons, already done that. It's got an upgraded rack pump from its original 5 mil to about 7 mils of fuel, and there's lots more fuel going in. But it's always been slightly let down by the fact that still bolted on it, and I'll bring you in here for a look, is the standard exhaust, standard turbocharger. So it's, a, it's like a single scroll manifold, and, um, and our turbocharger's about this big. So I've got one that's like this big, as I showed you a minute ago. And then I decided that if we were going to do some turbocharging upgrades, we'd need to do some exhausty type upgrades. So I'm going to go over here a minute and go and get me exhaust upgrades so you can understand what the cunning plan is. Ta-da! I found myself one of these. So this is like one of them Eminoxy exhaust silencers off of a lorry. It's not like the big one, because the big one's like this, and it would look a bit silly clamped on a four-ton recovery truck. This is like the mid-sized one. So what a man's got planned, so he's doing a bit of trucking, is to bolt this, we've already started on that, up behind the back of the cab. It comes up through the front of the body, but that's absolutely fine. That's not a problem. And then it's going to have to get a very capable mate of his who does the stainless steely, poshy type welding exhaust making to make himself a pipe to link between his new stupid great size turbocharger and his, um, and his 10 4 big buddy, good buddy, stonking great big exhaust. So we reckon once we've got some more of the boosty stuff <coughs> and some more turbo edge, as long as it doesn't explode, shit the heat plugs out the side of it, which, it, which we have had before, they're a bit of a weak spot, um, that should make it quite fun. 
So I'm going to go and lean this over there and then we'll take you in here and you can have a look at the original turbocharger and then we're going to try and mount the one the size of a dustbin without charring into stuff. Sounds like a plan, doesn't it? Right, so what we've got is obviously current turbocharger, oil feed, return, exhaust pipe which I've undone and we've got four manifold bolts, three of which I've managed to get out. So we need to get this out and then figure out whether the ginormous one fits in this hole without hitting all of this stuff and melting things. So I'm going to stick it on time lapse. I've done done the exhaust. I need to knock the exhaust pipe off because that's now junk. We're going to need a bigger one. I'm just going to have to get through here and down there without ruining any of that. As you can see now, the original turbocharger, she's out. Um, this is its oil feed, and then the return is back there. I reckon I can probably utilise them. I'm coming up with a plan for that one. But obviously, as we've got to put a, sc a scroll thingy, me controller, quick spool thing on here, and then a turbocharger, those original studs aren't quite going to cut it anymore. So, going to have to try and get them out of there, and then to get this sort of temporarily mocked up I suppose is the word to check that there is enough room here one not to boil your steering shaft alive with an exhaust can shield that this heat pipe is ultimately movable so that's not a problem and that we can sort of go out here I mean there is always a possibility of adaption on the um, bulkhead sandproofing mat thing to give us a bit more clearance in here by basically taking this corner of the mat off and beating out the corner of the footwell with a hammer so we've got a clear turbo passage. Otherwise, man's got to go and spend time and money on another manifold that puts his turbocharger the size of a dustbin here, or make himself an extension bracket that puts his turbocharger the size of a dustbin there. So we're going to try taking these studs out, mocking it up, seeing what it looks like, I reckon. So after about three attempts, I've made some extended studs. Um, I've tried about three different ways of spitting, fitting me the uh, quick spool thingy. I finally got that, so I've had to put the uh, vacuum side of it round here, otherwise it eats stuff here. And then I can actually utilise the original return and the original feed. So I've got to put 40 mil on the original return, which is metal, to bring it up so that it won't escape. And then oil feed wise, I've got to take it out, I reckon, from behind the turbo manifold, from the exhaust manifold, and I reckon there's enough room then to run it out in front, through, and then I've got enough give to gingerly adjust it to fit it on the top. So, test fit number one, it's all obviously flapping around at the moment because it is only test fitted. So what I need to do now, pull this back off on the bench, pull the, um, the oil feed off, and um, I've taken some measurements for the returns when I know what I need to cut or cut and add. And then, um, and then in theory, once the oil feed is adjusted and it'll screw and bolt into the top here, or bolt into the top here, um, and then we should be able to fire it up and move it inside because it's miserable out here. And the other thing I'm going to have to adapt on is this wastegate. Now this wastegate bolts on, three bolts on the bottom, and has this big lump poking off of it. Now, sadly, with that big lump on there, which it, um, this is about 2 mil off the steering shaft, which is not really what a man needs. So I reckon a bit of, bit of adjustment. I mean, let's be honest, it's got some spacers and a load of stuff, so it doesn't need this bit. I can just get rid of that. So what I'm going to do now, take this back off, and then get this on a bench, drill some, pipe, drill some holes, pilot some, um, drill some, put some threads in it, get the bolts all to work so I can bolt this oil flange on the top of there. Bonza. I've uh, made a bit of pipe up, 
and just chuck the o-ring over there which i want to keep so i want to pop that back on there it's not the prettiest in the world we've braised it up but it'll do for a minute uh, drill the two feeds in a pillar or drill the two bolt holes in a pillar drill um, obviously we have got the original had a tiny restriction in it to keep the oil pressure up now that is in the end of there the pipes are about the same size so that's absolutely fine that flat clamp on top of that we have fitted the um, original pickup on the bottom so that then meets to this that then goes down into the bottom of the, for the oil return and then what I've also got to do at some point is obviously because this is clamp fit so I have this piece of later sprinter so obviously ring round there because we need to make it linked to a manifold now at the moment we are running unintercooled because I can't find an intercooler thin enough and big enough to fit but what we're going to do for a mo before I have to adjust that is literally slap this on get it all lined up get the pipe back on and then fire it up once so we can fire it up with this see if the turbo spins and does the thing and then probably another episode we're going to have to work on wastegate valves and stuff right so we managed to get that on there. Oil feed is in, could do with a bit of rerouting. I'm going to try and sort of bend it nicely. Uh, turbo return is back on. Probably sure that's going to leak, but this is test fitting. So um, obviously because the um, wastegate actuator is off, we've had to pull the wastegate shut with some zip ties. And obviously we've got things in the way. But the cunning plan is literally to get it to start, not leak enough oil to die, and get it inside so that we can fettle things off properly so first starch stupid great big turbocharger coming up that's find the key so we've come to a point where we reckon it will start now obviously it's completely half dismantled obviously said turbocharger is not blowing into a manifold yet but if it goes doesn't spew loads of oil all over the place we can move it and that should go roundy round Sorted. Well, that would appear to be working. No oil leaks as of yet. Give her a bit of juiciness. Just move this inside. Well, that seems to sort of function. We, um, we're obviously uh, running a bit like rough, cold, bit of blue smoke. That clears when it's warm. Um, and obviously it's got no manifold pressure, so don't, it's fine. Once it's warmed up, I think we might have a couple of heat plugs out. There is a brand new set of heat plugs up there. Um, she don't smoke or anything like that. She's not even very breathy. So we appear to have a functioning oil tight turbo. Um, we do have an oil leak down there off of the stupid oil level sensor. But I've got a plate to take that out finally because that's been leaking for years. So um, what I've now got to do is refine this. Obviously make it a bit nicer. Link up a quick spool valve. Uh, make the pipes for the quick spool valve. Cooling doofer. Um make some boosty pipes, find an intercooler, and send it off to have an exhaust made without driving it there, because we're trying to drive it to have an exhaust made, it's going to set fire to the bulkhead. Technical. So I'm going to leave this one here today. So basically it's now running, so it's movable, and the turbocharger is fitted, so I've got to decide quite what the next plan is. Probably might run unintercooled for a bit, just get a link between here and here so that we can actually use it um, get it finally sorted and um, as anyone who's got an eagle eye may have noticed the kangoo is dangling off the ramp behind it so all the vinyl bits for the kangoo apart from what color we're going to paint it because we'll have a chat about that at some point 
are here. And also, over there is the Peugeot, or one of the Peugeots, because the other one's out there. So we'll just shed that and that, and then that'll be me done for the day. Right, so a bit of a final close-up. So, as you can see, that is sort of slung in there for a minute. So we go around here. Forklift is fixed. There is a video on that. She now holds the coolant -y stuff and functions. And you'll see the Kangoo is dangling off a ramp, sans one piece of the back removed for the final piece of its MOT fail work. Um, there is a video coming on this, as you'll see. That's the, three, the 310 that used to have the flat body and the little high ab on it, and I decided I didn't like the chassis. So I've changed it. So that'll be coming soon. We have finally got the 124 uh, 606 sat over a pit. We're halfway through that. But we are halfway through building some greedy board sides for a transit tipper. Um, you won't, but we didn't video that. And then, obviously, without another melee of stuff that needs doing, the 309 is out on a ramp, and I am going to finish off the welding and get it an MOT. So that's coming. So, can you fit a stupid great old set turbocharger and a, and a quick spool valve on your Volkswagen Mercedes engine converted 603 turbo diesel, now a bit more turbo-y, and a, a bit more fuel-y anyway? Um, yes, you can. Yes, it, it sort of bolts in there. So we'll call this a work in progress, because um, let's be honest, it's going to take a bit more love, and then hopefully it doesn't just grenade itself. So we're going to have to go careful with it, but I'm quite chuffed with that. That'll be a sort of work in progress project. And um, I am knackered. I went go-karting this morning for a mate, my mate Wayne Stag, do bless him. He's getting married to the love of his life, Steph. And my God, I am too old for go-karting. My wrists no longer work. My hands are beat to hell. I don't know what happened to my back. My feet don't feel the same. It was like one of them super pre go karting things. It was like 55 minutes, an hour of go-karting. Oh, I've smashed to pieces. And, um, and I've got the rest of the stag do to go and go back to, because obviously I hadn't finished this, so I'd take a bit of time off. On another point, um, my, my, what do we call my merchandising manager um, that I've employed, we call her the, um, <coughs> the wife, has finally, with a bit of help from me and our local company, almost got hoodies, t-shirts, blah, 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 sorted. So coming very, very soon, and I'll chuck the link in when we've got the web thingy, buy it offline page thing working. Stuff that I don't do, obviously. Um, then you can finally buy some t-shirts and some stuff. Um, that is me done for the day. Thank you very much, Al 6D Diesels.